Could somebody please make it make sense? Hey everybody, welcome to A Pop of Culture. I'm your host, The Esoteric and Facetious, and this is A Pop of Culture, which is my video essay podcast where I speak on pop culture, social justice, and the human experience from a black bisexual money perspective. Everything, and I mean everything I say, should be taken with a grain of salt, as I'm simply a recent college grad with access to a recording device and the internet. With that being said, my youths and be your sole reason to critique my views unless it's truly relevant. If you disagree with anything I say, let's have a civil conversation in the comment section below. Before we get into the topic of this video, which is why I dislike Pray Tell from Pose, I want to advertise my cover channel, A Pop of Culture Sings, where I sing throwback R&B, contemporary R&B, pop music, whatever I'm feeling, whatever you're feeling. So if you want to be down like Brandy, if you're down with the click, R.I.P. Aliyah, then definitely feel free to check the channel out. Now let's get into the topic of this video. The topic of this video, as I mentioned, is why I dislike the character Pray Tell. So, Pray Tell is a character from Pose on FX. Pose on FX was a period piece that was loosely based on Paris is Burning, it's New York City in the 80s and 90s, and it's about the lives of black and brown LGBT people of color who participate in the ballroom scene and who also create chosen families after being discarded from their own families because of their identities. And today we're going to be focusing on the character Pray Tell. I have my notes right here if I look down. So Pray Tell is a character who's portrayed by Billy Porter. He's a black gay man who is in his 40s for the majority of the show. By day he's someone who sells perfume at a department store, but by night he's a fashion designer for the balls and he's an MC for the balls. He actually aspires to be someone who is a fashion designer who travels the world, but he he's okay with emceeing the balls and doing fashions for the balls until he can make that happen. So what don't I like about Pray Tell? I just like Pray Tell because he's an example of how unresolved trauma can make you a bad person to the people that you love. And the most glaring example of this is his relationship to Ricky. So let's give some background on who Ricky is. Ricky is a young black gay man who is homeless until he becomes a member of the House of Evangelista. The House of Evangelista is a house that contains most of the main characters of the show. Ricky initially dates Damon. Damon is Blanca's first house son. Blanca starts her own house. She's played by MJ Rodriguez and Damon is her first house son. He dances she finds him sleeping out in the piers and she wants to make sure that he has a home, that he has a future, so she takes him under her wing at the balls. And that's where Ricky discovers him and they begin to date. One thing to note is Ricky and Damon are about the same age, so it's not a shock that they start dating. As Ricky begins to stay with the Evangelistas, him and Damon become intimate. Blanca discovers this and she asks Damon if they're using condoms. This is during the HIV AIDS epidemic. A lot of people are getting HIV, a lot of people are dying from HIV. HIV and or AIDS so she wants to make sure that they are aware of everything going on so that they can be proactive they can practice safe sex so that they ideally won't get HIV and if they do get HIV they will be aware of their status to have the best quality of life that they can and extend their life as long as they can. In fact in the pilot episode Blanca tests positive for HIV so because she has recently gotten HIV positive diagnosis she wants to make sure that her house children don't have to deal with the same thing if they can avoid it. So she prompts Pray Tell, her friend, to take them to go and get tested. Blanca is a trans woman of color and Pray Tell is a black gay man. So she decides to have him get them tested. There's a lot of crossover between Damon, Ricky, and Pray Tell and he's somebody who's older who can give them some advice on having safe sex as a gay man and making sure that they know their status. She talks to Damon about making sure to use condoms, but she asks Pray Tell to actually go take them to get tested. And this moment is extremely significant when it comes to Pray Tell and why I dislike him. Because this moment, in my opinion, solidifies Pray Tell as a mentor figure to both Damon and Ricky. He's been a gay man far longer than they have, and he is choosing to be a mentor to them to give them advice that he might not have had when he was younger. Pray Tell is also tested for HIV and other STDs, but unlike the boys, he's given a positive result. He actually chooses not to tell the boys in order to not upset them. And this is another example of Pray Tell taking the position of being a mentor with Damon and Ricky. Because Pray Tell is choosing to protect them in the way a father or mother may protect a young child from information that they know that their child may not be ready for. Like when a parent might not tell their young child the not so pretty realities of the world to protect them, Pray Tell chooses to not share her status with Ricky and Damon to protect 
them from worrying about him and his well-being. However, Ricky doesn't heed Preto's warning about practicing safe sex and ends up contracting HIV. Devastated and fearing what life as an HIV positive gay man in the middle of the HIV AIDS epidemic will be like, Ricky emotionally makes a move on Preto. Preto initially declines Ricky, but after Ricky persists, he gives in. And this is a moment that permanently shifts my view of Preto because as I just mentioned earlier, after being prompted by Blanca, Preto decided to take Ricky and Damon under his wing as younger gay men and get them tested. Well, in my opinion, once you're a mentor to somebody, you're a mentor to that person forever. And that creates a power imbalance where you have a position of authority where Ricky and Damon look up to Preytel. They look to him for guidance. And because they look to him for guidance, because he's that mentor figure for them, no matter what happens, there is always going to be that power imbalance of there was a point where you were somebody who was giving me information and explaining things to me and breaking them down to me because you were older in life. And because you were older in life and you have that experience, no matter what happens, there's never going to be a time where we're going to be equals where something like that is going to be appropriate. And as I write here, I said that yes, Ricky was old enough to consent, but I personally found it unsettling how Preytel, as a 40-year-old man, was not able to control himself around somebody that he mentored. And for me, one of the things I noted here was he knew that Ricky was upset in a vulnerable state. Ricky has agency and he can consent to the encounter. He was the one who initiated the encounter, but one of the things I want to point out very clearly is Ricky never looked to Preytel in that way until he had gotten the HIV diagnosis and Preytel supported him through that diagnosis. In that moment, Ricky was scared about dying. He needed someone to talk him down, to calm him down. If you've ever been in a situation where you feel your life is over, you know what Ricky felt like. You're not in the right state of mind. If someone is there for you in that extremely vulnerable time, you can easily feel linked to that person. Linked to that person in this weird, unhealthy way. An example of this is when Freddie saves Carly's life when I Carly. Carly never showed romantic interest in Freddie until he saved her life. However, after he saved her, she saw him in this new way. If Freddie dated Carly knowing she was only interested in him because he saved her life, I feel he would be wrong because he would intentionally or unintentionally be taking advantage of Carly's vulnerable feelings relating to that accident. Likewise, Preytel intentionally overlooking his better judgment to have sex with Ricky was him taking advantage of the fact Ricky was heartbroken over finding out that he was HIV positive. Another form of evidence that Preytel knows he's in the wrong is the fact that he doesn't share this encounter or this budding relationship with Electra or Blanca or the other full-grown folks within their network of friends who are also mentors to the younger characters on the show. When they find out what he's done, they react in disgust. Electrum remarks that house fathers and mothers never sleep with their house children. And this is a moment where I feel extremely disgusted by Preytel's behavior. Preytel, instead of taking accountability and saying, hey, maybe I should have said no, which he already had said no. He said no initially, which shows he knew that he was in the wrong. And he knew that he probably shouldn't have taken that encounter all the way. Instead of saying, maybe I was in the wrong, instead of saying, I lost myself in the heat of the moment, Pray Tell responds to Electra saying, oh, I wasn't their house father, which is a technicality because technically he wasn't their house father, but he was a mentor figure. And I feel like that's something that's really sick and grimy. The fact that you know that you were a mentor figure to them, but instead of saying, hey, maybe I shouldn't have taken it there and taking that accountability, he refuses to do that and he tries to rest in this technicality of, oh, I wasn't their house father. This is problematic because he was aware of the fact he was in a position of authority over Ricky, which is why he rejected him in the first place. However, when he's called out, he defaults to that technicality. And one of the things I noted was, one of the things I wrote was, well, I think it's great that Poe showed black queer male intimacy on screen, a sentiment that a lot of tweets, articles, and think pieces wrote praising this encounter, I wish the showrunners would have considered the implications of a mentor having sex with their mentee. I said especially with the common narrative that older gay men take advantage of younger gay men, I expected better than this from a show that was created with a lot of LGBT people in the writing room and working throughout the production. Not only was this initial interaction problematic, their relationship that budge from this is extremely inappropriate as Preytel is an extremely abusive partner. He consistently verbally abuses Ricky. As his health declines, his depression worsens and he self-medicates with alcohol. Every time Ricky tries to encourage him to stop this behavior, Preytel becomes abusive to him. He tells him no one will love him because he's HIV positive. Ricky is nothing but kind and loving to Preytel and he doesn't deserve this mistreatment. While I can sympathize with the fact Preytel has seen countless friends and loved ones die from HIV, which he currently has, I cannot support someone taking these hurt feelings out on someone 
woman who did nothing wrong. If Ricky is not able to resolve his feelings about the hateful way that Praytel treated him, this can continue the cycle of abuse. And what's to say Ricky won't become a jaded HIV positive man like Praytel who abuses other black queer men who he comes across. It feels like Praytel hates Ricky for the fact that he's young and still has opportunities because Praytel fears his mortality as the older person who has HIV. So there appears to be this resentment that he has of Ricky because even though Ricky is with him, Ricky is still younger than him. So I feel Praytel is angry at the fact that he knows subconsciously if someone's going to survive the HIV, it's going to be the younger people. Praytel is older, so he feels if anyone's going to die of HIV, it's going to be somebody his age. So I feel he takes out his frustration with the fact that he's going to likely die of his condition out on Ricky because he feels Ricky, because he feels it's unfair that Ricky might survive and get to live a full happy life. Which I think is disgusting because it's not his fault that Praytel contracted HIV. Praytel does everything he can to stay alive if he fights every single day. Who knows, maybe he can make it to find a cure. He was neglected and abused as a child for the fact that he was gay. So you would think he would treat somebody like Ricky who's young with the utmost respect and love because he knows what it's like to be somebody who isn't respected, who isn't valued because of their identity. He actually treats Ricky just as bad if not worse. And the problem is if he is in this negative state of mind as somebody who contracted HIV as a grown man with trauma from his upbringing related to his sexuality. How does he feel Ricky's feeling as somebody who contracted HIV extremely young who also has had negative experiences because of his sexuality? If you're somebody who's not doing well, had all these years to process and cope with your emotions, why do you think that abusing somebody is going to help them to be somebody who is healthy and doing well. And one thing I found extremely disgusting was the fact that he treats Ricky like garbage for ages, but cries and begs him to stay when Ricky finally decides to go. And this is something that's just so disgusting to me. I can't stand when people will treat somebody like trash, but the second that person wants to leave, the second that person wants better, they want to try to beg them to stay. You don't get to have it that way, where you get to keep somebody on a leash where you get to be the one who abuses them and you get to make them feel bad about themselves. But the second that they want to leave and want better, you beg them to stay. No, if you treated them right, if you treated them like you had an ounce of sense, they wouldn't want to leave you. But because you want to treat them any type of way, they're going to go and find better like he should and like he should have did a long time ago. At the end of season three, the writers attempt to redeem Praytel's character by having him sacrifice his life for Ricky. Praytel and Blanca have access to a special trial HIV medication and that helps them to improve their health. However, Ricky confides in Praytel that his condition is worsening and Praytel decides to give Ricky his remaining medication and ends up passing away. So Ricky's health is restored while Praytel dies of HIV and he's lauded as a hero for saving Ricky's life. But here's the problem. You can't repeatedly abuse somebody and then be absolved for that abuse simply because you do something nice for them later on. Praytel did a good deed by saving Ricky's life by giving him that medication that helped him to restore his health. But that doesn't take away the fact that he was verbally abusive to Ricky for ages when Ricky was trying to help him. And in summary, I feel Praytel was wrong for sleeping with Ricky. Yes, Ricky was old enough to consent and have agency over his body, but Praytel should have acknowledged the fact that Ricky was extremely upset and acting differently because he was in a vulnerable state. Even if you approve of them sleeping together, the way Praytel treats Ricky is unacceptable, and the way the show tries to portray him as a hero for giving his medication to Ricky is unsettling because it sends the message, you can abuse someone as long as you like, as long as you do something nice for them in the end. So that's the first reason why I dislike Praytel. The second reason reason why I dislike Praytel is his treatment of other loved ones. Praytel, despite being one of the oldest members of the cast, often acts most immature. One thing I want to make clear right now in the video is nearly every main character of the show Pose is an LGBT person of color who has been kicked out of their home for being gay or trans. Not only have they been kicked out of their home, they've been judged by other people within mainstream society for being gay or trans. Praytel is not the only character who has to deal with uncertainties of being HIV positive, as Blanca has been HIV positive from the pilot of the show. However, Praytel is the only character who makes his struggles other people's problems. Though he is always receiving love and encouragement from other characters who are always trying to empathize with him, he rarely reciprocates that love in a real way. Blanca suggests Praytel get on the AZT, she's always there for him when he's in the hospital, and she's constantly inviting him to her home. And when I mean in a real way, I mean Blanca is going out of her way. She's going out of her everyday routine to see Praytel, visit him, and support him. However, when I see Praytel, I often only see him doing things that are 
are very easy, which are things like having a conversation with Blanca when they're in the same space or congratulating her when she wins a trophy at the balls. I really, if ever, see Pray Tell open up his home to the evangelistas. I very rarely, if ever, see him go out of his way to do extremely nice things for her, to check in on her. And here's one of the things I really resent about Pray Tell. When Blanca does do something nice for him, like go to the hospital or check in on him or suggest that he do some type of a experimental medicine trial to hopefully extend his life and hopefully cure the HIV or make the HIV more manageable, he oftentimes will be mad at her for trying to make the best out of a bad situation. He would rather sulk in pity about the fact that he's HIV positive than actually take the treatment that might help him. Even though he's afraid of dying from HIV, he doesn't want to be proactive and take these experimental medications that could help him. Blanca's trying to help him. He doesn't want to die of HIV, but when one of his most near and dear friends tries to help him and tries to suggest that he do things that might help him, he gets angry at her for wanting to help him. He yells at her, he's disrespectful to her, and honestly, there's so many times where I feel she should have cut him off. You don't talk to people who are helping you, who are trying to encourage you, who are trying to make you the best person you can be in that hateful tone. And honestly, I think their relationship is sad more than anything else because though he's kind to her, he never goes out of his way to be a kind and a loving person until he's literally on his deathbed. You see him say to Blanca's new boyfriend, love her, respect her, treat her kind. And that's one of the few times you see him really go out of his way to go hard in the paint for Blanca. Every other time, whenever Blanca does something nice to him, it turns into him yelling at her or being ungrateful. He's such an ingrate. He wants to have this self-pity fest about how his life hasn't turned out right and how everything is so unfair. But when people are kind to him, when people give themselves to him in a meaningful way when it comes to supporting him, he never reciprocates because all he cares about is himself. When he's in a good mood, he does the bare minimum. Things get even worse when he's upset. When he's upset, he turns a home-cooked meal at Blanca's into an opportunity to be rude and spiteful. He will attack her, her house children, and other guests for simply trying to help him or call him out for bad behavior, and he rarely ever apologizes. Instead of focusing on the matters at hand, he will take to personal attacks at anyone who dares to call him out for his bad behavior, which is extremely immature. If I'm calling you out on something that you're doing that is hurting me or yourself, this has nothing to do with my own faults. So don't use them as a way to deflect from the conversation that's about you. Pray tells one of those people, if you talk to him about his drinking, he's going to talk to you about the fact that you're doing something. And it's like, no, that's stupid. If what you're doing is an issue, then we're going to talk about that. And we can talk about my thing after we're talking about your thing. But my thing doesn't negate your thing, especially if yours is actually impacting your relationship and causing you to be abusive to your partner and your friends. People like Angel and Lulu were on drugs, but the thing was, they weren't hurting other people. They shouldn't have been on those drugs, but they were doing it as a way to cope. They weren't hurting other people with their habit, while Praytel was actively abusing his partner. And this happened multiple times throughout the series. Praytel is in a bad situation. The people who love him try to meet up with him and help him because they love him, instead of him appreciating the love that they are giving to him, instead of appreciating the fact that this chosen family will do any and everything for him. He complains, he pitches a fit, and he wants to be hateful to these people who love him, who will do anything for him. There's a situation where they want to get Praytel into rehab. They want to help him deal with his addiction problem. They work all week trying to get perfect for the ball so they can get all the money that they need to send him to rehab. But the second that he finds out about the rehab, he curses them out, he's hateful, he's spiteful. This isn't even the first time he's done this. Instead of being grateful for the fact that they're trying to help him, he wants to attack them and tear them apart. And that's just so disgusting to me. You don't do that to people, especially people who are trying to help you. And I think Billy Porter does a great job portraying Pray Tell because sometimes somebody who's addicted to something and somebody who's in that state of mind, they're not going to be receptive to things and they're going to be somebody who is ungrateful and who is rude. But I think there should have been more done to correct that behavior and to allow the other people to be treated right. I think Ricky stays with him too long. I think Blanca never calls him out in the way that she should for doing wrong. I think a lot of the characters just become punching bags for Praytel's anger and upset feelings about himself and his situation, which is so problematic because they have their own struggles that they go through. They don't deserve to have to deal with him and his upset feelings all hours of the day. I'm back. I'm sure you can tell it's a different day. I record in the library. The library closed. I am back. So here we go. So we are wrapping up the point that Praytel was unsupportive to his 
friends and loved ones. And this was something that I said made me extremely uncomfortable to watch because Pray Tell is never held accountable for his actions. He just continues to go on hurting people, hurting people, and hurting people. And he's never told, hey, if you don't stop doing this, you are going to be cut off. It's just pitying. So because they feel bad for him, they feel bad for all the things that he's been through, they refuse to give him an ultimatum of if you don't stop doing this, you're going to be cut off. I think that's something that really hurts Pray Tell because if Pray Tell didn't give his medication to Ricky, then he would have lived a full life, hopefully. So if he had lived his full life, he would have been somebody who was in his early 50s, who was out here hurting people and doing people any type of way. And that would have been no way for him to spend those last 20, 30, maybe even 40 years of his life. No other character is given all these chances to hurt other people. He is the only one. And like I said, it made me so uncomfortable watching the show because he gets to abuse people all he wants and nobody gets to say anything about it. But the problem is he's unable to do it because when you keep pushing those lines and pushing those boundaries with people's respect and you never are held accountable for it, you have no reason to stop. When Blanca never calls him out for his bad behavior or when she never calls him out enough for his bad behavior, he's going to continue doing it. He's going to feel it's okay to keep mouthing off on people and treating them any type of way. And I feel like for me, I feel Blanca had a good heart and that's why she didn't want to hurt Pray Tell because she felt he was already hurting so much within. But because she didn't hold him accountable, he caused harm to Ricky, Damon, Angel, Lulu, Electra, everybody. And that goes into my final point. The third reason why I cannot stand Pray Tell is his treatment of Candy Ferocity. So let's talk about Candy. Candy was portrayed by Angelica Ross. Candy is an out and proud black trans woman who participates in the ballroom. She is a part of Electra's house before she starts her own. She's confident in herself. And Candy is one of those people where you are not going to talk to her any kind of way. You're not going to disrespect her. She loves herself too much. She is one of those people who lives out loud. She is herself all the time, 110% of the time. And Pray Tell can't stand that. One of the things I wrote down is Pray Tell goes out of his way to be mean to Candy. And here's something that I really didn't like. Pray tell never or rarely if ever shades Blanca. He rarely if ever shades Angel. He rarely if ever shades Damon. He rarely if ever shades these people. But he is always threatened by Candy. I think one of the reasons why he's threatened by her is the fact that she is a dark-skinned feminine person like himself. And that's something I don't like. I feel Pray Tell is threatened by Candy in ways that he's not threatened by Blanca, Angel, Damon, or the others. I said whenever she tries to express herself in a category that isn't something she's automatically deemed good in, Pray Tell immediately shades her. She participates in the ballroom and her category is face. So when she's in face, people love her. She's always getting tens across the board. But when she tries to participate in any of the other categories, he's always going to drag her down. He's always going to try to make her feel bad about herself or like she just isn't a fit. What are you doing over there? And this is something that we see a lot with Pray Tell and Candy. Candy's somebody who likes ballroom, but she wants to innovate. She wants to try to make things new and Exciting, whereas Pray Tell just wants to keep things the way that they have always been. And that's something I really dislike about the way that Pray Tell treats Candy. I write, nothing she does is ever good enough for him. And I also know it's almost like her having the courage to try different things sets him off in the worst way possible. And that's the thing. It's like Candy existing as herself and being herself sets Pray Tell off, whereas with Blanca and the other people, the lighter skin cast members, he doesn't really feel way about them. But when it comes to Candy, he can't take her. And I think it also has to do with age and experience. Candy is younger, Electra is darker skinned, but she's a legend, she's an icon within Ballroom, so I feel like he is going to give her her tins regardless. But with Candy, I think it's the fact that she's somebody who's young, she's spunky, and she's somebody who is willing to shake things up. I think with Pray Tell, he finds comfort in Ballroom, but it seems he's comfortable in the way things are. He's not comfortable in changing up the status quo. So with some on like Candy, her existing and the way she is and being dynamic and wanting to change things up and not wanting things to always be the same, it seems to threaten Pray Tell in some way. He doesn't like it. He's not cool with it and he's not cool with Candy existing in that way. In her last moment alive on screen, she actually goes to a diner where the MCs are all meeting to talk about the future of Ballroom. She suggests that they start doing lip sync, which is something that's becoming more and more popular. And they immediately disregard what she's saying. They immediately try to shade her. And that's her last encounter with them. She ends up 
pulling a knife on them because she's so upset at them for never listening to her and what she has to offer. One of the things I want to say about Pray Tell's behavior towards Candy is this behavior is toxic. If you're someone who is a leader in a community or space, you should be excited when someone wants to evolve the craft you love. But it feels like Pray Tell doesn't care about the bottom innovating and evolving. He just loves the power that he gets over people, including confident trans women like Candy, who he is threatened by. Just like in those dinner arguments where people challenge his behaviors, it seems like whenever Candy challenges the status quo of the balls, he can't take. He's threatened and in response to that threatened feeling, he has to be negative towards her. Later on, Candy actually has went missing. The other women go to look for her. Lulu goes to Blanca because she's scared. She hasn't seen her for a few days. They end up going to a motel. This is a motel where Candy goes to meet her John. Candy and Lulu have started their own house, which is very expensive. It's very expensive being house mothers. So Candy goes to selling her body again to make ends meet. Once they end up going to that motel, they ask the person at the front desk, hey, we haven't seen our friend in a few days. We don't know where she is. Do you know where she's at? They actually see a missing key for the room that she was in, and they ask for the person to check it out. He sends the maid to go there, and she discovers Candy's body. The women are devastated and they are traumatized. The women do everything in their power to give Candy the best service that they can, the best home going that they can muster up for her. Blanca pulls drinks at the hospital with a nurse friend to get access to Candy's body because they are not blood relatives so she wouldn't have access to her body. But she pulls those strings so that she can give her that funeral service since Candy is estranged from her family. When they go to the funeral home and they see Candy's body prepared, they see that her makeup is not flattering. So they pull out all of their makeup to make sure she is beautiful and she is presented in the proper way at her homegoing service. They are doing everything in their power to give Candy the homegoing that she deserves. And pray tell, first and foremost, I didn't even think pray tell should have spoke at her funeral the way that he was always shading. I get that he's a community leader in the ballroom, but at the same time, he was someone who was shady and hateful to her so much of the time. And when he gets up on the pool, pit to go and speak about her he immediately starts shading her and throwing little jokes here and there and i get banter in a dark time you want to make people laugh you want to take people's minds off of dark things and sometimes that can come in the humor of oh you know she was a pain and everyone's behind but she was murdered she was murdered by john her life was cut tragically short she was a statistic one of the reasons why blanca wants to keep angel out of sex work is because she knows this is a possibility and this tragedy isn't just a statistic anymore it's a person that's in their real life and so i feel like with all the shade that he had for candy i just wish he would have been more serious in that in the delivery of her eulogy i said right here that he had the gall to joke on and shade her at her own funeral i said the same person who he refuses to let exist as the person she was outside of what he appreciated her for the same person whose good idea he laughed at and I said, if things couldn't get any worse, the ghost of Kenny comes back to forgive him for being rude to her. And this is something I can't stand about the show. The show always goes out of its way to portray Pray Tell in a good light. In my opinion, there are certain things in life you do that you don't get forgiveness for. And I get the idea of being the bigger person and forgiving somebody even if they've done you wrong, but there's something dirty about this where Blanca never holds him accountable for the wrongdoings that he does to her. And now he never acknowledges the fact that he might've been wrong in sleeping with Ricky. And now that somebody has passed away that he was so unnecessarily cruel with, he gets to be absolved of accountability for the wrongdoings that he's done. He finally admits not to Candy, but to the ghost of Candy, that he was jealous of her self-esteem and refusal to let anyone stop her from expressing her femininity, which he never felt he could do. And I said, while I appreciate Pray Tell for being honest about his mistreatment of another character, I was extremely disappointed with the fact that it was done after the character died and he's immediately forgiven. Candy immediately says to him, I forgive you. She says, I forgive you before he even apologizes. And that's not cool. I feel Praytel should have had to sit in his guilt about being rude and hateful towards her for a little bit longer before he gets immediately forgiven. And I said, lastly, his apology to Candy's ghost doesn't translate to his treatment to other trans women or characters in the show later on, making me feel like Praytel yet again is getting off scot-free from mistreating another person. So one of my thoughts, I said, overall, I think that Billy Porter does a great job of portraying this broken character who has horrible habits when it comes to his treatment of others. Uh, one thing I want to say is there are so many people who have been through traumatic experiences in their life and they never allowed those traumatic experiences to allow them to feel it's okay to treat other people with disrespect. I will say we can't forget the trauma that Pray Tell's been. He was a young black gay man in a time where, where there wasn't all of this. Love wins, marriage equality, prep, drag race, and the like. He was rejected by his own family for his sexuality and he was preyed on by his stepfather at a young age and not only that but he saw many lovers and friends die from the disease that he himself currently had. 
I think pray tell is a great example to us that we have a choice in life. We can either allow the trauma that we've been through to turn us into someone who is bitter and who causes more pain. We can allow that trauma to allow us to have compassion for other people. It's our choice. Choose to be not like pray tell. Choose to be someone who's kind hearted even if your circumstances aren't kind to you. Even if people who are around you aren't kind to you. Thanks so much for watching. Love y'all. Bye bye.